Hi guys, Anson here from SA 4x4. We're back again at the Rhino Park here just outside of Rayton. And today we're going to snatch this bucky. So, Bernie, I've got you here again. Thank Margaret. you, Anton. Welcome here, Margaret on the beach. Margaret on the beach, right? The, the right side. Um, Bernie, let's start with the basic. Let's start with a little bit of theory for the guys so that they understand what we're doing when we're going to demonstrate it. Now, from the first episode that we've done, the first tool that you need is a spade. Yes. Everybody laughs at you when you say the most important piece of recovery equipment you can have is a spade. You go, oh, big deal, I'm not going to get yourself out of here with a spade. Um, if I only had a spade, I'll get out of here. That I can promise you. You're going to dig a lot, but you'll get out. Okay? Um, and the scenario that we've kind of created here is Pete Pompis that has gone to Mozambique with his 4x2. And he remembered to deflate the tires, but he only went to 1.2 bar. And he came through here and he used a little bit too little momentum and now he's stuck. So Bernie, we're going to connect all the snatch rope, the, um, the bridle, the etc. Yeah, all of that. Um, but we're not just going to jump away and start going like a bat out there, of hell. There, there, is, there is this um, co common misconception that you hook the snatch rope and you give it horns and just pull away. Um, that's normally when things go wrong because a snatch recovery is a violent recovery as opposed to a winch recovery which is slow and the impact is low. Because now all of a sudden I'm putting all these forces into play. Um, there's, there's so much that can literally go wrong with a snatch recovery. So don't just hop into the car and then give it horns and, and try and pull away as fast, as fast as you can and see what happens at the end of the day. That's when recovery points break. That's when uh, your straps fail, etc. So we want to try and make that recovery as smooth and as gentle as possible. Okay, Anton, basics. Really? Basics 101. I'm going to use a spade, you can use your hands. Okay. <laughs> and you see, I'm sloping it so that the climb is gradual and not sudden. And we try to get it to the front tracks on the level. In actual fact, we shouldn't struggle because this, uh, the sand is wet, so it should compact very easily. Okay, Bernie, we've cleared the sand. I'm gonna get my anyway, back. that's why we've got kids. I told you I have to bring my kids. <laughs> so we've cleared it. Let's go and see where we're going to attach the bridle now. Okay, let's have a look here quickly. Once again, it's time to get down and dirty. Guys, we've got two recovery points um, on this Hilux. It's welded in, it's proper, it's on a cross member which is attached to the chassis. So those are our proper recovery points. If we can quickly just go and have a look here on the front end of my vehicle. However, just bear in mind that those aren't rated. We don't know what the braking strength is of those recovery points. Here on the older model, I've still got the two recovery points from the factory, but I fitted an aftermarket ALB rated recovery point. And that is rated at four and a half tons. Okay, so that would be the ideal one because it's, it's weight rated. Um, but guess what? All your recovery points, when you're stuck in sand or stuck in mud, where are they? Hopefully above. <laughs> Imagine this vehicle being like that in the mud. Okay, so the secret is be prepared. Think. Guys, and, and please, you don't have to drive through the water, you don't have to drive through the mud. Mud and water make brilliant pictures and that's where it stops, okay? If you can drive around it, rather drive around it. Don't put yourself in a scenario where it becomes a very long day. But Anton's made our day about three hours long. Okay guys, we've now attached your vehicle. Um, we 
leave. I only got one bride. Yeah. Because this guy on his way to Mozambique Not me. didn't bring any recovery equipment because he doesn't have any of that. Okay. So we need to make another plan. So what we've done is we've taken a tree strop that's got 10 ton braking strength and we're using that as a replacement bridle. Okay. And the reason for the bridle, guys, can you see we've, we've basically spread the stress of the recovery. We created an A-frame. You've created an A-frame and the stress is now spread over the chassis. It's not just on one side. If you just pull on one side and I had to pull at an angle and I'll give you a violent recovery, I could actually bend your chassis. Okay, so now we've got a perfect A-frame and your kinetic strap, guys, we fed it through there. You've got to make sure that this strap is flat and there are no kinks in it. Every twist is a weak point, okay? So you don't want any twists in it. So we make sure that it's flat, run it through the hand. Okay, Anton, you can attach the bridle on that end. Let's go through there. You see how much Anton is causing a twist. <laughs> All right. And one half and another half. There we go. And on that um, concentrating glass. <laughs> step back this way that's fine okay <laughs> remember when we um, when we spoke in the beginning um, when it comes to safety guys the moment this strap is attached to that vehicle and the other end to the vehicle doing the recovery this is regarded as live would you step on a live electricity wire no okay so the correct way here is if you need to get to the other side you walk around what I'm going to do with you now is you're going to get into your car, start your car, and go into first gear. The moment you see me start driving, I want you to gently start accelerating. When you see the slack picking up in the strap, start accelerating. You need to assist me. Okay. So I'm not going to give you a violent pull. I'm just going to give you a slight tug. Let's see what the car does. Okay. If it moves, I know it's not seriously stuck. If it stays there, I need to come back and go with a little bit more momentum. Please note I'm not saying speed. Because the moment I say speed, then people think fast. Yeah, right. Always as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. That's it. That's it. Okay, guys, what we've done in preparation here is I've, I've basically built myself a bit of a track, compacted the sand, just to give myself a solid base from which to start my recovery with. Because the sand is very soft and um, it is the hottest part of the day, so um, traction does become a bit of an issue in the sand. So I've built myself a track, and the other secret is I've already gone to low range. So I'm going to utilize second gear low range. Let's give this some hops. Okay, very easy, very simple. Now, let's have a look what it looks like when it's a violent recovery. A violent snatch really pulling the vehicle. Okay, Anton, the first one was very easy. Pretty easy, straightforward. Okay, because we had taken all the resistance away. That's why I'm saying, if you, if you do the basics right and you prepare your recovery, take your time. And once again, it's like we said with all the other recoveries that we do. Guys, if it's not life-threatening, don't rush in and try and be a hero. Take your time, have a look, prepare your recovery, and there's not going to be anybody that gets hurt at the end of the day, because that was so simple. I mean, you were stuck proper. Yeah, okay. we were stuck proper. You could feel. I mean, I was on, in first gear, really pushing to try and to get out bef before we started this whole process. The vehicle wasn't going in anywhere. Um, maybe if we tried a little bit harder, we could have, maybe, no, maybe should have. I'll tell you what would have happened. You would have burnt the clutch. But we'd have, we were, of course, that's, damaged. That, the damage and would and that's the thing. The first thing, actually, always, if you don't need to go through it, don't go through it. 
and that's that's why I said to you it's it's critical that you plan your recovery, do the basics right, and then it becomes easy like it was now. Even in mud, prepare the track that you need to go on, take the the, the source of the res resistance away, and make it easier for yourself to do the recovery at the end of the day. Um, for all intents and purposes, we did a recovery going forward. Now, what would normally happen, especially when I'm in mud, I get to a point and I realize, but hang on, I'm not going anywhere. So what would be the ideal then is to get out of it. You don't want to go forward into it because that's just, you're creating more hassles for yourself because you know you're not going to go through there. So then basically we do the recovery, bringing you out in reverse. And the other thing that's critical, guys, and I, and I often see this when guys post videos of them doing recoveries, etc. Don't ever do a reverse recovery. In other words, the vehicle that's doing the recovery in reverse gear. Remember, your reverse gear is your strongest gear in terms of gearing in your gearbox, but it's the weakest gear in terms of construction. So you're putting unnecessary strain on that gear, so you're either going to get that kind of damage, and then think of it, where is the, most of the force going at the end of the day? It's going to be on the front diff because that's the closest to where the pulling point is. Yep. Okay? And on most vehicles, the front tip is a lot smaller than the rear tip. So when you're going to do a recovery where I'm standing, for instance, and you need to recover, recover me in that direction, you are turn your vehicle around, and you make certain that you're doing the recovery going forward and not in reverse. Okay. Bernie, thanks. This was fun. It's a pleasure, Anton. And that's the ball game. <laughs> that's, it. that's the last one. Really? That's the last one. Okay, calls for a beer on the beach. Calls for a beer on the beach. Guys, thanks for watching. That was the last one. Thanks for watching. Share your experiences in the comments below. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And um, Benny, we have to come up with something else to do. <laughs> we'll have we have to find a plan. <laughs> we can't just stop here. Uh, well, then, then, if we'll... you want to see more of me and Benny doing crazy stuff in the bush. Again, Benny. Thanks, we'll, mate. We'll, we'll discuss the next adventure over there beyond the beach. And a bride. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys.